What's up everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. In this one today, we're gonna be building a drone, but I'm very excited about this one because I'm actually switching to FetTech Electronics. It's something I've wanted to do for a very long time. I have a few really good friends in the community that have swapped and told me nothing but good things about it, so I had to jump on the bandwagon here to try it out for myself. So needless to say, I'm very excited, and I'm very excited to finally be able to make a actual build video. Uh, before I really just jump into to it, I do want to say that this will not be a comprehensive build video. I won't be giving you the down and dirty details. It's more so of a vibey, I'm gonna build a drone and you can watch it if you want kind of video. If you do have any questions, make sure you drop them in the comment section. And if you're curious as to what I'm using to build said drone, you can find all the details in the description below. But with that being said, I think we can just jump right into it. So let's do that. All right, so we're gonna pop these open. First things first, we have a spike absorber. Everybody I talked to about Vet Tech said to get one of these, so I did. That's so tiny. So I got the newest flight controller that they've dropped, which is the G4. Um, I ordered it again right off their website because I was impatient. Uh, comes with some harnesses and then the wow that's a lot smaller than I thought it was gonna be so move that to the side but that's all they give you is this little pack of cables and then the foreign one here Wow, look at that. So we got a capacitor. I wasn't sure if it was gonna come with one, so I bought a bunch. But the freaking foreign one ESC. I don't know, something about FPV electronics makes me really happy. It's like, look how cool that looks. So yeah, this is what we got. We got the flight controller, the G4, a spike absorber, and then the 45 amp foreign one ESC. So I'm kind of going to walk you guys through what we're going to be building with today, starting with the frame here. We are going to be trying out one of these Johnny FPV QAVS special edition frames. Got it for Christmas, so I thought this would be the perfect time to use it. I'm very excited for this. Um, it looks pretty cool by the picture. You can see that. I just wanted to bop in here quick to say I am sponsored by Kin FPV. He creates drone frames and they're pretty rad. So if you guys wanna go check them out, you guys can in the description below. If you want anything, make sure you just go hit him up and he will get you what you need. Back to the video. In here, I also got some 3D prints with it just to make the mounting process for the antennas and the GoPro just a little bit more seamless. And those are from Brain FPV. I also got one of these standard GoPro looking mounts. Um, I prefer these kind of mounts because not only do I freestyle, I do the cinematic stuff. So I like that a lot. And then you cannot build a drone without um a grip. I tried to use the stock grip that frames come with and it sucks so bad. So I always just buy a pack of Umma Grip. This time I just have the standard Umma Grip with the Umma, Umma God logo on it. And then moving on, we are opting for this Caddx antenna for the Vista. It's the one that's a little bit more rounded as you can see. I'll take it out as I get to that part of the video, but we're changing the antenna out to one of these. We already have some motors. Uh, iFlight actually sent me out these motors, so we're just gonna put them to use. I like these motors a lot, they're really nice. So we're gonna be using these for the build as well. The FetTech Electronics did not come with an XT60. Uh, I didn't realize this, so I just took off one from my old hobby wing stack and it'll work just fine. Uh, you guys seen in the beginning the unboxing and first look at the FetTech stuff, so I won't go into that. We have my Crossfire RX here with the Immortal T and then here, we got my Vista unit. Uh, again, I've used this as well, so we're just gonna reuse it, reuse, recycle, all that good stuff. So that's what we're gonna be using. If you're building, I recommend a smoke stopper. Get one of these. 
Okay, so the first look here we have is the frame. This is what I do every single time that I build a drone. You obviously gotta build the frame first, so it comes with some stickers, very nice. 3D prints, all that stuff. Oh, it comes with some skids. I like that. Okay, and then I got the frame here. All right, one thing I will say about frames and whatnot, I do know there's a lot of YouTube videos online with some sort of how-to, but as a pilot that doesn't build drones too often, and when I do, I struggle maybe a little bit with the frame assembly, it would be nice just to have like a cue card with how to build the frame, because I don't always want to go watch YouTube videos on how to do things. It'd be cool just to have like an instruction sheet and be able to go through it, so. We're gonna put all these dudes and dads into here. I would say this is the most stupid part of the build, is building the frame. Never really been a fan of it because they do things like this that makes no sense. I mean, it makes sense, but like as I'm building, I'm like, what are you, what is going on here? This is why it's important to have a, a build card like on how to build the frame. It's like, this don't look right. A few moments later. I get it now. The moment of realization as to why things are the way they are. Those little spacers are so the arms don't like wiggle around. That makes so much sense. Building videos are so weird because I have to build out in front of me versus just right in front of me. So I have to like put my arms out a bit and it's a little bit wonky. Beautiful. So I've already used these motors. So I'm going to put them in the same orientation as my other drone. I'm like flailing around like crazy, but there are the motors. We do have a heat gun. If you guys are gonna get into FPV and build, I highly recommend getting something like this. They are cheap and heat shrink just looks good on the drone. So can't complain. Yeah, like look how clean that just makes the motors look like, looks so good. So this is the spike absorber, soldered on and then clip the long pieces. And then I luckily found a piece of shrink wrap or heat shrink, yeah, that's the word, that fits it absolutely perfect. So that works so well. I'm not gonna heat shrink this quite yet, just cause I don't know how I'm gonna mount it to the board, but we do have the capacitor on it, which is step one. We're gonna tin all of the pads. I actually really do like soldering. These are the weirdest motor. Whenever you strip wires, you gotta make sure that you don't leave anything on your workspace, you can easily destroy your build doing that because I've done it prior.
feel like that's a lot of solder. I feel like it's kind of questionable. But they're not touching. I could drag this in between the two, so. So I've kind of put my leads underneath my board. Um, they will not be touching any type of carbon, which is nice. Um, that way I can not have a bubble of solder right here. So it's underneath it. So I kind of I kind of like how that's going so far. Feed it through this mount. I think that's all it sits in there. Cool. And then we will put it on. Bit of a click. I believe, I don't know. Yep, there you go. And you put this silver clip back on top of it to kind of hold it in place. And then you screw back in all of the screws. I can fit my capacitor kind of right in the back there. I think that's the right way up. Who knows? We'll see by the end. I heard you don't need to soft mount anything. So um, I always put the zip ties to the inside. I probably could have trimmed these a little bit, but we will save that until I crash it and I potentially need to trim it. Make sure you're wiping off your iron. That one's a little sus. annoys me when motor wires don't look good but like it's sometimes the most painful thing in the entire world to do especially when the solder pads are extremely tiny but I guess you're not meant to solder like on top like most of the pads are you're kind of going into them which is different I don't think I've ever had an ESC where I've soldered into the pads if that makes sense back to the spike absorber. We need to connect these wires then to connect them to the ESC. Shwit. I'll take a peek at my soldering. Not bad. God, this is way harder than it needs to be. Could use a smaller iron tip, but Apparently I like to make my life hard. Cool. So that's what this looks like. If it'll focus. Hello. I still might tape it. I could have had it down lower to cover it and protect it. But I think one thin piece around this way should be sufficient. Quickly what I did was I wired my cable underneath my frame so I would have space for my spike absorber so this is actually gonna work quite nice because it could either go under here and up to the side right next to the build or it could come out here and have more length so I think that's actually gonna work quite well now I gotta recut sticky tape for my Vista re-put in my Vista and then I can start putting things to the the flight controller. The easiest part of this whole build because the wiring diagram is beautiful. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. We have yet to do the, um, whatchamacallit, this thing that we've been talking about the whole video. I have crossfire, so I need to do this pad, this pad, this pad, and this pad, which is so simple. They like lay it out for you, super clean and easy online on their wi wiring diagram. Okay, so we need ground. We need ground. Oh, my head's in the way. Five volt. And then whatever that is, and whatever that is. So clean. It looks like if I mount it right on the edge, 
I will. Well, I mean, I do have enough space. I just want to not put it where I'm going to put the spike absorber. My radio should be binded, but for any reason that it becomes unbinded, you want that hole there. So you can hit the button. Honestly, it probably won't end up in the right spot, but it's the thought that counts. <laughs> so as long as it's roughly in the spot, you could probably click it, but. Hey, I got a little bit tighter. I think that'll do. But I still have access to the button, which is kind of all I want. So my spike absorber is here. It's zip tied down because I can't get tape in there, but it's in there pretty snug. So I'm gonna solder the negative to the negative pad and the positive to the positive pa the pad. You can see how short these wires are though, which is what you want. So I'm pretty, I could have probably went shorter, but didn't want to screw it up. That looks good. And then I'm gonna solder on the Nano and then the Vista. So the home stretch, my friends. They are on there, so that's good. I'll take that as a win. Lines ground. This is five volt TX T Whoops. Okay, so we have a battery here. We have my smoke stopper. Everything is on the drone. Um, so I think we're ready to test it. Uh, nervous. Okay, press. No smoke. Oh my gosh, blue lights. That's good. I think. Cool, that startup noise was so sick. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. It was my first time at doing like a top-down build video. And to be honest, I really did enjoy it. So I hope you guys did too. If you have any questions, pop them in the comment section below and I will respond to you there. But stay tuned because we're gonna go fly this in the next video you see. And I'm super pumped. So I hope you guys are too. I guess that's it, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Adios, make sure you're subscribed.